Hi there and welcome to yet another episode of Behind the Lens and this episode as you saw is about the Sony 35mm f1.8 for the full frame versions of Sony and I'm coming here from the woodlands in West Brabant, the Netherlands and this is called the Rukvense Hei so try to pronounce that one <laughs> Um, so in today's episode, very simple, let's review this 35mm f1.8. There's also a Sony uh, uh, G Master for f1.4, but I didn't even consider that for the very simple reason that I find 15, 1600 euros too much. Now you can obviously, like I did, look at uh, third party manufacturers, Sigma, Samyang, Tamron. Um, Sigma and Ta Tamron I'll never consider because I have poor uh, experiences with them. Sigma has been yes no-ish to me, you can also see here why. Um, and Samyang has actually not disappointed me over the years, so I looked at those as well. But the price ranges here are from 300 up to 1600 euros. So you might want to check out the list below I have for you, also with some of the reviews from other YouTubers, because that could really help you in making your choice. Now first things first, this lens is not cheap, it's nearly 700 euros. That's not cheap, but it's not expensive either. Secondly, the build. The build quality is basic. It's got a manual focus, autofocus button, and that's it. So no focus hole, no image stabilization, no uh, weather sealing. So what you get is very basic, but it's also very light, which I personally really like. The other part is a major decision in actually buying this lens is the minimum focusing distance. Yeah, for me, that is really important, the minimum focusing distance. Since it's a prime, I really don't like focusing distances like you have on the 85 millimeters, which are roughly a meter or something, I think it is. This one is 20 centimeters. That also means with a prime, unlike a tele, uh, photo lens or a zoom lens, uh, you have to continuously adjust your position. So if you want to center your subject and you really want to bring it forward, you've got the uh, aperture here of f1.8, but you continuously have to change your uh, movement. So for me, that minimum focusing distance is really is really important. That was one of the major steps why I took this particular lens. Now, whether you agree or not, leave a comment below and keep in touch. Yeah, the list of all the alternatives is below. If you're wondering what this weird clip is, this is the Insta, oh, the Insta360 GO 2, yeah, which I use for my B-roll. I just had it clipped on here. That wasn't so good. Yeah, so from that point of view, I really think that you know the 35 millimeters from Sony for the full frame presents a valuable option. Now, if you look at the sharpness in the center, and this is normally the question. If you shoot wide open, so on f1.8, it is somewhat soft. When you stop down to 2.2, 2.5, it already noticeably increases, and by 2.8, it gets sharp. I think the perfect sharpness you get at 5.6, 6 ish, so yeah, 4.8, 5.6. That's where you get perfect sharpness in the center, but I think with, any, with every lens, that's the same. Now, unless you're printing billboards or something, you're not going to notice that. Yeah, I've printed a few pictures, and there's no issues there. Um, when it comes to the autofocus performance, well, it's a Sony native lens on a Sony native body, so that normally is very good. This lens is no exception. It is pretty um, fast as usual. It doesn't hunt, even when you're very close, uh, you know, like 20 centimeters, 18 centimeters, it doesn't hunt. If you go to the manual focusing ring on this, it's very small, but it's very smooth. The draw is completely 360-ish, it seems, so you don't really have to worry about that as well. Now, the one thing here is the price point. So let me know, do you think this lens is too expensive? If you look at the Sony 85mm f1.8, is about 100 euros cheaper. And that is really a sharp lens in the center, even at f1.8, which is amazing. This lens, to me, is a bit overpriced. But let me know, and also let me know what you recommend. And while you're at it, keep in, hit that keep in touch button so you can get all the updates for the channel as my community tab has been activated. I have, thank you, 500 subscribers, so finally I can use the one feature in YouTube that I've always wanted, which is the community tab. Keep on rocking that one. Now, let's look here at some of the images I took here in the woodlands. And this is also where I need your tips and tricks on when it comes to landscape photography. So, Rory, if you're watching this, please let me know how you do it. 
One of the great things here is, and you'll see a little B-roll, is that you see this lovely red tree surrounded by a sea of yellow. This is typical autumn colors. One of the things that I'm struggling with here is to get the exposure. Yeah, I'm normally shooting on F8.0 to F10 with a shutter speed of about 100 because I'm hand holding it. I'm not on the, uh, on the actual tripod. I never get my exposure for some reason, I never get it 100% right. I see the sharpness, but I simply can't. The composition I'm okay with, but it's that sharpness. How do I do that on the Sony camera? Because I'm using zone. I can also use spot, I can use flexible, but whatever I try, I don't get that sharpness what I really want. This is not only exclusive to this lens, but almost with my 20 millimeters, I have the same, which is a very sharp lens as well. So appreciate it. If you can leave your feedback below, comment, keep in touch, and I'll see you next time.